I just, uh, yesterday I got a, a complete list of how many places I will be speaking, and it comes out around 15. Oh, is that right? I think, yeah. I tell you, Mr. President, we just got a little while, and I, yeah. uh, since our deadline is so difficult for this weekend, you'll know your, your ceremonies, that I wanted to try to get you to put your mind forward to the time when you will go through this ceremony, particularly at the cemetery. And what would you like the world to hear and see when you, uh, when you do that? Well, that whole day's ceremonies, uh, and they are all virtually in one day, the, the whole concept of that, I think, was so morally right uh, that all that has taken place now in the whole furor has blinded everyone to the, to the purpose. Uh, Chancellor Cole, well, as you know, uh, they felt uh, in the great June ceremonies, D-Day and all, that uh, a little as if they, uh, they didn't, couldn't see how they could be in, included, but at the same time, they felt now as this 40th anniversary was coming along here of the end of the war, uh, is it going to be, you know, like earlier on, the repeat of the celebration, hey, we won the war? Or are we going to recognize what has happened in these 40 years and what has been achieved? And he and I talked about it, and I told him that my own view was that, uh, because it's apparent I will be, would be in Germany at this particular time, that my view was, isn't it time for us to look back to that day of the end of the war and then recognize if there's any celebration, it is a celebration of what has followed. That from the end of that war came this complete turnaround that has led now to 40 years of peace, plus our one-time enemies being, you might say, our staunchest allies. And here at the summit conference alone, three of the seven heads of state will be from the three Axis nations, and the other four will be uh, from the Allied. And so when he told me about the experience when uh, President Mitterrand invited him to join him at the, at the cemetery at Verdun, Verdun, where in three wars, German and Frenchmen have died in unprecedented numbers, the battles of Verdun. And he said the impact, seemingly European-wide, was so significant that here, these two countries that had engaged in so many wars, here they were standing as friends, shoulder to shoulder, in that surrounding, that he asked me, would I be willing to do something similar, uh, an estate visit following the summit conference? And I said, of course. It seemed to fit in with what I myself had said of what we should be observing. And so the whole, uh, I am a, state visitor, it's a state visit following the summit. The mix-up came, and I perhaps contributed to it with an uh, incomplete answer to a question at the last press conference mm -hmm. on Dachau. Well, what apparently happened was, and I don't think I misunderstood, was that an invitation came from another source to go to Dachau while I, while I was there. And it seemed to me that as a state visitor being hosted by the government officially in ceremonies that were dedicated to this idea, that this was a private invitation for me to go off on my own. And it could be conceived of by the German people as something of an affront to do that and for that particular type of visit. 
this was to be an act of forgiveness, I mean, a uh, year visit or reconciliation? Just, well, I suppose, uh, yes, but just visiting. Mm -hmm. And so I said, I can't do that. I'm, you know, I am going to do what is the official program mm -hmm. that is planned uh, mm -hmm. for my state visit. Then I got a cable subsequently, but after I'd answered that question, uh, and I didn't make it evident at the press conference that I thought it was a private invitation. Mm -hmm. And the misunderstanding came was that they evidently thought it was an official invitation that I had turned down. And I've tried a number of times now to clarify that since. But then I got a cable from Chancellor Coles saying that a, a camp, a concentration camp, would, mm -hmm. was a part of the schedule had not named one, uh, said there were several possibilities that within range of where we were going to be. Then our people who went over there, they worked out that Bergen Belson was the mm. logical choice. Mm -hmm. So, yes, I'm going to the one, I'm going to the other, but Bitburg was picked because that is where a base, where there are uh, joint forces, German and American forces based there, uh, working together on the, the NATO line. There'll be a religious service at the, uh, with the military, of both mm -hmm. countries. The cemetery thing is a, a very brief stop. It's simply mm -hmm. a stop on the way to this, uh, to meeting with these soldiers and, and with the troops. I never thought of it as honoring. I thought of it as just what we had talked about, that in that locale, the presence of men who had, uh, who had died, uh, regardless of which side uh, they were on, there was nothing brought up about whether any were uh, connected with the camps in the sense that the stormtroopers mm. were. Uh, that came along later. As a matter of fact, when the choice was made, there was ground, snow on the ground, and even coal didn't know that there were any uh, mm. buried there. Was this, mm -hmm. Is this the uh, sharpest criticism of kind of personal conduct like that that you've gone through, Mr. President? Yes, other than the time when uh, an opponent and uh, my first election, the 1966 election in California, uh, tried to portray me as uh, anti-Semitic. And uh, I must say, the Jewish community of California rose to my support because they knew very much different uh, than they knew of many things that I had done that uh, revealed the lie of, of that. Of that, I see. But, uh, this, uh, yes, has been, has been very painful because, Hugh, I, no one has said oftener than I have that we must never forget and that the Holocaust must never, it must always be remembered with the knowledge that it would, must never be repeated. Uh, our relationship with, with Israel, uh, all of these things, uh, and to suddenly uh, make this as if it was something that I was doing that was hostile to the people who had suffered in the Holocaust. I think I was in on the knowledge of what had taken place in those camps, uh, myself and a few other people, much earlier than anyone else in this country was. Because the post where I was serving as an adjutant and executive officer in California, the Air Corps post, we received the film from all, the combat film from all various branches of the service there, and we put together on a regular basis a film staff report for the general staff in Washington that was classified top secret. So we were the first to receive the film, okay. combat camera film, from the units that overran the camps, mm -hmm. drove the Germans out and, and uh, rescued the prisoners. And it was unbelievable mm -hmm. to sit there and see that film mm -hmm. of uh, not only the dead and the ranks of dead, but the, but the condition of the, the living. Those are, those are I remember bad. one shot I, I can never forget. It was a building that was, it looked like a warehouse. The floor was entirely carpeted with bodies. Mm -hmm. and. In that film, while we were looking at that, out in the middle of all of those, suddenly, slowly, one body moved and raised up a man on his elbow and tried 
with his other hand to gesture. He was alone, alive, and out there yeah. with, and this with was the on dead. The film. Yes, mm -hmm. and so uh, I, I, I can never forget what we saw mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. Uh, granted, it wasn't equal to the living visits that some have been able to make at that time, or mm -hmm. those who were the the victims. And here, the I have to say, for anyone who went through that, I realize there's no way we can understand the depth of their wound, and we have to realize that yes, they're going to have an emotional response to anything that they think might be toward forgetting mm -hmm. what took place. I understand that. And uh, so I am most pleased to be able to complete the visit with uh, Bergen Belson and I will be speaking there. Mm -hmm. You, the I, I gather, never entertained an idea of canceling that uh, cemetery visit. And no. I, uh, that goes to the matter of your responsibilities as president. Yes, and the fact that I thought it was right. Mm -hmm. Because we're not going there in the sense of uh, forgive and forget. We're going there, actually, what I believe is needed is a recognition of, the, of what has been accomplished in Germany. That here is a Germany that is certainly the most democratic regime that the German people have ever known. Yeah. And here is, as I say, this, well, it would, you know, you, you could see where a country that had done what they did might have bulldozed out of existence those camps and said, let's pretend it never happened and let's never mention it again. No, they have preserved those camps when, with enlarged pictures to show all the horrors for people to come and visit. They themselves have said, we will preserve the memory of this so it never happens again. And now today you have a German people who, as I say, are our staunchest allies and friends for 30 years, an ally in NATO, 40 years of peace, and it began virtually with the end of the war and revealed how widespread must have been the hidden uh, repugnance of many Germans for what was going on. But now this is what I think is needed and for the benefit of the Germans to, to recognize what they have accomplished. Uh, they certainly live with a sense of guilt of what, is, what happened then, but now uh, I, think, I think they deserve the recognition that mm -hmm. Uh, that this generation of Germans, uh, yes, there are there some there who were old enough, as, as I am, to have been part of the other. But about two-thirds of the Germans uh, either were not born or were small children, and so had nothing to do with that. Mm -hmm. Can uh, you assuage the, uh, the criticism in this country? Through I am hopeful that when they see the tone and hear the tone of of that day of remembering that they will understand because at Bergen Belsen I am going to speak freely mm -hmm. about my feelings mm -hmm. uh, with regard to the Holocaust. Yeah. And I, I recognize that, uh, that when I said something about once an answer to a question that the people in that cemetery, even though they were the enemy, uh, the conquered enemy, that they too were victims of Nazism. And someone, they interpreted that as meaning that they were as much victims as were the people in the Holocaust. No, the people in those camps have a memory that I doubt if any other people on earth have ever had. And that memory must be preserved. What I meant was that it was Nazism, not just with the camps and that horror, but that brought on the war, that brought on the destruction of the killing of civilians in the Battle of Britain, just as uh, subsequently there were victims within their own country of our own uh, bombings in Hamburg and so forth. 
So to recognize that all of that, all of our young men who gave their lives, mm -hmm. were victims of this obscene mm -hmm. regime mm -hmm. that was responsible for so much hatred and destruction. And you know, you, other wars in the past, and particularly in Europe, have all led to the, uh, to the next war. The settlement of the war was such that the grudges and the hatreds and the rivalries remained. But the miracle that took place 40 years ago, the cleansing that has taken place now of that, as I say, not forgetting, mm -hmm. but that a settlement was arrived at that has led to this great friendship now and this peace for these yeah. 40 years. Very, and, uh, I, very well put, yeah. That's wonderful, Mr. President. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> I didn't mean to give a lecture here. No, that's precisely what I wanted, because as you know, our magazine comes out on a Monday after the ceremony, and I, this is kind of put the tone that you'll try to, try to uh, portray on that day, I'm sure, and I'll be there to keep my eye on you and watch, and I wish you good right. luck. Well, yeah, I think I'm going to have I've an spent a lonely time, I'm sure, uh, watching old friends that uh, have been distressed and that sort of thing. Oh, I'm going to have an opportunity to speak to several thousand young people. Mm -hmm. I guess they're wrong about high school age or so. I see. And I'm really looking forward to it because I found out that that generation of younger Germans, they, they're unhappy. They're yes. pessimistic. Mm -hmm. they're, they know they have to feel the shame about mm -hmm. what their country did when they didn't have anything to do with it. Yeah. And then coupled with that, well, you know, what hope is there for them? And I'm going to try to tell them that something about the job that their country has done and that there is hope. Good enough. Yeah. <laughs> None of us can choose our parents or where, our, where we're born. No. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We've all, I think we've got a few memories not that widespread. I, well, I remember in Colorado, the mm -hmm. commander that went out and the force out of that door, wiped out that Indian building. Oh, and yeah, exactly. and children and so forth. I, and as, and quite honestly, Mr. President, I remember in Vietnam when indeed uh, some of the young people were, cho were told they were victimized by their country. Remember that terrible time when Johnson was in this office yes. and trying to go around the country to explain it, and the same thing happened. A little bit of it here, see. Yeah. You kids are, uh, you kids uh, have no choice. You know, you've been brainwashed. You know, well, I'm sure that we've all suffered somewhat. Like I've that. tried to ask myself. I've tried to say, you know, here you, if you were growing up and you wanted to love your country, and the flag was flying and hear the national anthem. But at the same time, you were filled with a deep shame about something your country had done. It must be a very trying time mm -hmm. for young people. They must have a tendency to get cynical about it. Mm -hmm. Well, why should we stand up when the flag goes by? Yeah. Mm -hmm. and we'll try to cure that. <laughs> Good. Okay. That's terrific. Thanks so much. Good luck. And I say I'll be a be along and say it's snowing over there. <laughs> yeah, I'm a Nancy doesn't know what to pack. And That's right. Everything. I, I always try to take the attitude of hell, they're not going to let me be outdoors much anyway. <laughs> Guess not. Uh, well, fine. Uh, it was a pleasure. Is everybody's mics turned off.